Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator. Sorry for the hiatus there guys. I know I've been gone a couple days. Need to take a little bit of a breather but we are back and back on schedule. Today we are going to be checking out the Wing 42 B247D. This is the first ever official designated commercial airliner. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides for Microsoft Flight Simulator, please consider joining me on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier 2 and above have access to all of my guides, as well as any future updates and future guides that will be coming down the road. Link to Patreon can be found in the description below. Okay, guys, as always, we're going to start with a quick review of the exterior and interior textures and then get into the flight model behavior and obviously starting the aircraft. This aircraft ha comes with a ton of features, especially when it comes to the visualization features, such as, you know, uh, external doors and, and, and objects that are available on the outside. And we're going to be taking a look at how to configure all those. This aircraft was initially built in 1933. And again, as I stated earlier, this was the first ever officially built uh, commercial airliner. So this is going to be a ton of fun to check out. I am going to tell you guys there's a couple spots uh, where we're going to skip a couple of the procedures. The startup process can actually be rather um, uh, tricky in this particular aircraft. There's actually a lot to it. Um, and so we're going to bypass a few of the steps to keep the video short, um, but we'll definitely be flying this thing around uh, quite a bit. I've flown it a couple times already, just sort of getting up, getting familiar with how it operates, um, but still very much in the learning stages. So without any other further jabber on for me, let's go ahead and get started with the review. Okay, so getting into the exterior textures, guys, as you can see here, they, I think, in my opinion, are absolutely phenomenal. Um, now, there are some areas that look a little bit duller than others and a little bit on the flat side. However, I think, again, that comes to A, different texturing techniques, and B, again, giving that sense of age of the aircraft. This is a very, very old plane. Um, but uh, you take a look at these big radial engines, and I think they're beautifully modeled. I love all of the detail that can be seen from the cylinder heads moving back. Um, and then, you know, the uh, propeller just looks its age. I mean, you can see that she's an old girl um, and it just has a ton of great detail put into it um, again speaking to that flat sort of weird texturing that I was talking about you can see here on the top of the wheel well a uh, little bit of a goofy reflection on there not much detail uh, down into the tires really giving them that tire look same thing with the uh, the hub cover there um, but again, these are all minor things, you know, nothing that I can really um, call out as bad. I would definitely not call this bad by any means. I think the artwork and, and effort that was put into the aircraft is very clearly shown. Um, you know, somebody had commented on previous video, you know, when I mentioned, you know, clearly a lot of hand-drawn aircraft and or objects and people are like, well, how else are they going to do it? Well, there are many different ways you can do it. You can import a lot of things and, and take texturing models from other things. And this is very clearly something that was uh, uh, developed, you know, uh, with a lot of heart and soul put into it. Uh, the documentation that comes with the aircraft also gives a, a brief synopsis of, of a lot of the effort that's been put into this aircraft and uh, its development. Now let's go ahead and step inside the aircraft here. And again, interior textures, I think, are right on par. Um, again, really displaying the age. You can see the age of this aircraft. Now, one of the things that I really enjoy about it is I will tell you that the aircraft, every time you close Microsoft Flight Simulator, whatever condition this aircraft is in, that's what it's going to be in when you start it up next time. For example, if you have the window open here um, and you close out of Microsoft Flight Simulator, you come back in, this window is still going to be open. Uh, the other thing I like about it is these are not click. Um, you don't click it to open the window. You actually have to click and drag, um, which I think is kind of neat. And you're going to find a lot of the control surfaces are very similar in that aspect with this particular aircraft. You know, I hadn't even... I have seen quite a bit of this. Oh, hey, what's this? This is actually new. I don't know if that does anything. I see this more often than not on this aircraft where the hand pops up indicating that there's an action that can be completed. But I, oh, there it goes. There it goes. And boom, how about that? <laughs> that is awesome. This is just one of many. I'm going to show you guys quite a bit of the uh, available options here if I can get my controls together here and stop messing around. 
Um, all the doors, same way. Click, close it, open it, close it, open it, close it, open it. Sorry. <laughs> and uh, let's do this here. I need to get the camera down. And again, the interior modeling is very, very well done. Again, I'm loving the nostalgia that comes with this aircraft. Um, all the way back to the washroom. You guys got to go to the washroom, open the door, <laughs> get around the door, and there's our washroom. Um, so uh, just keep in mind, it's not changed often. So, you know, might not smell the best. Let's back up here. Do, 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 do. Oh, we're outside of the cabin now. You can tell that I still need to definitely set up some uh, further camera views. Um, the interior or uh, doors to the interior can be opened. Um, and we're going to show you guys how to do that here in just a minute. Let's step back up to the front here. Yoink. And let's pull down the clipboard. The clipboard is something you guys want to get very, very familiar with this aircraft. This is still where I am definitely learning, but there are a ton of features. You have a three-man crew, essentially, with this aircraft. We're going to be talking about them in just a second because you're going to see them. So first, you have your performance limitation charts of the aircraft, some single-engine procedures that are there and ready for you, um, and then general information, uh, even right down to your best glide rate. I think this is too cool. I mean, this is a, a lot of really good information here. Takeoff uh, performance numbers, manifold pressure. Pressure at 36 inches, RPMs at 2200, maximum uh, duration for five minutes. After that, you need to power down. So uh, we'll be adjusting that or addressing that a little bit later here. Configuration of the aircraft. This is where it all begins. This is a really awesome way to do this. So first off, let's talk about uh, some maintenance here. Uh, you can see that all of our fuel tanks are currently empty. You want to add some fuel? We're just going to pump some fuel up in here. All right. And I'm just throwing random numbers in here. Hopefully it doesn't throw the weights and bounces off to where we, you know, wind up in a crater somewhere. Um, oil, you know, we want to make sure we top off the oil and the engines. Passengers, you can load your passengers up. Now, the one thing I have noticed that doesn't seem to happen is we don't get actual passenger bodies back there in the back, which kind of bums me out. That's all right. You know, maybe that's something to that add later. I think it'd be cool to have the passenger models. Mail Express baggage. We can increase our baggage load back here. All right. And I'm going to show you guys why this is all so cool in just a second here. Uh, let's put a couple more up here. We don't want to be too aft heavy, right? And let's see here. Let's put up some of the uh, stuff on the background here. And here's where our crew starts to pop up. You can see what they're doing. So they're putting the wheel chocks in, passenger stairs, passenger door, baggage cart, loading platform. Let's just throw them all up and just make it absolutely crazy out there. And we want to start fueling the aircraft and, and uh, doing those maintenance procedures that we talked about. So we're going to hit make it so. I really hope that that was truly inspired by Captain Picard because he's my hero. And let's step outside. Take a look at all of this awesomeness here. Okay, so they're getting ready to... You just saw in the shadow, hopefully, that the uh, cargo door opened. Watch what happens here. We're just going to sit here for just a second. You're actually going to see the baggage, leave the cart, and get into the plane. Apparently, we're waiting. <laughs> we'll come back to it. Just like, I'll keep an eye on it. I don't want you guys just being bored here. But you got the ladders. And the reason why the ladders ne uh, next to the engine, they're actually two prong here, why this is critical. So um, you, these old engines, you actually have to start with a hand crank. Now, we're not going to be doing that today. We're going to let the ground crew do that. But the hand crank would actually go right in here. It then turns a flywheel because they don't actually have electric starters in these old aircraft. So the flywheel would start turning, getting everything rotating, and then you would mesh it with the uh, the gear housing, if I remember correctly. Uh, you know, sort of like a clutch principle is the same way a clutch works on a car. You know, when you depress on your clutch pedal, it removes the gears from the flywheel, and then you get to the you know gear you want, and it meshes back in. That's similar principle. Oh, our baggage is moving. Let me show you. Yoink. There it goes. So you can see all the baggage is starting to be loaded into the aircraft. And I just, I love things like this. This is great for simulation. Absolutely great for simulation. When you get that visualization of both sides. Ah, they closed the nose cone already. Apparently that was fast. But uh, the nose cone the same way. You'd be able to see the baggage or, or mail, bo mail bags in there. So really awesome stuff. Anyway, with the engine, so you'd have to crank up the flywheel. You'll hear it wind up and we will hear that later. And it makes a really loud noise. And then you mesh the flywheel with the rest of the engine gets the engine started and rotating. 
and then they would pull the ladder down, you know, and, and uh, let you be on your way. So let's see where we're at here. It looks like everything's just about done. We're still refueling the tanks. So just sit tight and sort of wait on that for a minute. So he's just about done and closing the uh, fuel filler. So that's done. All right, and we're gonna go ahead and let them pull the ladders away for now, because we're not gonna need them for right now. And then moving on over to the next page, this is what I was talking about. So you have an assisted start and a manual start. And you would have to get the ladder, attach the starter crank, and then you'd have to go out and actually, you know, it watches you through on how to actually, uh, you know, crank it. So you'd have to use uh, the camera control six. So if we go to control six, there, it takes you to that crank. And if the crank was there, you'd click it and you'd wind it with your mouse and then, uh, you know, get back in and, or, uh, excuse me, you wouldn't have to get back in. So you'd wind the crank here with your mouse. And then once you get it wound up high enough, you push here to uh, mesh it with the, mesh the flywheel and the clutch or in the, you know what I mean? The crank. Gosh, I can't talk today. Sorry guys. Why are we way out here? Am I looking at the wrong view? I think I am. There we go. Nope, I'm still looking at the wrong route there. Gosh, why was that so difficult? All right, so let's go ahead and see if I can at least get us on a general start here. Do, 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 do. And these are different panels, your maintenance sections, your realism setting. I have all of these turned off for the moment just to make sure that I don't mess it up for you guys. Um, I don't want you guys watching me be silly. Like I said, um, I will be very, very honest that I, I find the manual start process to be quite difficult. Um, now I could be doing something wrong, but I want you guys to experience this. Uh, radio equipment, you can set your squat code. So if we're doing a VFR flight, we'll leave it at 1200 for right now, but then you can set your uh, mode uh, as desired, okay? There we go, we do altitude reporting. I know that's a little early, but that's all right. I'm just showing you guys for demonstration purposes. And then some additional information, you know, with the credits and, and giving a, a kudos to those who have developed this fantastic aircraft. And it really is. And guys, it's only 20 bucks. Um, I was really blown away by the price. And and I'll be honest, you know, I'm, I'm, I think I'm just as skeptical as many. When you see low cost aircraft like this, it sort of makes you go, well, why is it so cheap kind of thing in comparison to like some of the higher fidelity aircraft where you see 60, 70, $80, right? Um, but I'm really, really appreciative of this aircraft so far. I've really enjoyed it. So let's set our parking brake and let's see if I can do this right. So you want to make sure, let's see, let's turn the valve off for right now. We're going to set the left engine as our initial crank. Okay. Here we want to set our fuel tanks. We got, there's a left on. And then the transfer is between both, or for both engines, excuse me. And let's see, so we got fuel flow. I guess I'm still learning this. Pushed in on the battery, I believe is on. Yeah, pushed is on, so the battery's on. And that would be battery off, battery on. Here we have our prop control. So we want full prop, about 10% crack on the throttles, and full mixture. Okay, so just like any of the other um, complex aircraft. All of your lighting is over here on the co-pilot side. So if you want your cabin lights or anything like that on, and you even got your voltage meter letting you know, hey, draining it, pitot heater nav lights. Like I said, it remembers wherever you were on your previous flight, and I terminated my previous flight early because uh, good old J-O-B got in the way. Had to work. Um, and then let's see here. I think that's where we're at. Oh, let's turn the landing lights off for now. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to first, again, so, oh, I need to open that back up. This is the fuel valve. We need to prime the prime the engines. Come on, there we go. I find that a lot of these things, it's easiest to use your, your mouse wheel. So we're gonna grab that. So I'm holding left click, and then I'm literally moving my mouse forward and backwards to pump it. We're gonna pump that about four or five times. And then if you wanna check your, your fuel pressure or your fuel gauge, you literally pop one of those for a second. Let it come back in. <laughs> Neat. Look how old that is. Same thing with uh, your your manifold pressure gauges and everything like that. You have to switch to which engine you want to read. It's crazy. All right. And then we are going to use the wobble pump to actually add some fuel pressure. Just like an old Spitfire. So we want to be between four and five pounds per square inch. You got your magnetos on. The magneto master mode pushed in is on. And then from this point here, we're going to grab our clipboard for a second. 
Let me make sure I still have pressure. I got to move quickly here. Come on, get to the previous page. No, get to the previous page again, quickly. Oh, let's let's add some more. So, and again, I'm grabbing it, and I have to use my mouse to pump it up. All right, so here's the winding up of the flywheel. It's going to get really loud here in a second. So he's attaching the crank that I was telling you about. And you'll be able to see it sticking out here in a minute. There it is. And now he's winding that crank. And let's see if I can make this work. This is the part where I tend to have a little bit of trouble. So you let him wind for a second. And then we should be able to... Yeah, I'm going to prime that up again. Now, see, this is the problem I keep having. I don't know if I'm... Uh, I'm doing something wrong. I know I am. I, I don't think it's the same. It's absolutely me. So to save you guys the headache, when you get to this part and you get frustrated, so you're supposed to wind it up. When you get when it gets rolling and gets it gets moving for a second, um, you should be able to, you know, hit mesh flywheel and the engine should kick over. All right, but in our case, I'm just going to go ahead and use the control E to get the engines going so that way you guys don't watch me make a fool of myself. And this should start both engines. Looks like they're both running. And here's some sound for you guys. Close the windows. Close the top hatch. Try to see if I can get to that door. All right. Then we're going to use our pushback tool. Where are you? There you are. Okay, it's close enough. Stop the pushback, set the parking brake. I'll get the head tracker going and we'll go for a flight. All right, now let's see here. We need to set the pedo heater on, turn the nav lights on. Shouldn't really need anything else. Landing lights, we'll wait till we get to the runway. Both seat belts in, no smoking. Air temperature, airspeed indicator, vertical speed indicator. That should be manifold pressure. Oh. Altitude, let's set our barometric pressure. There it is. So we're looking at 14 inches, we want 30 for takeoff. Oil, oil temperature, RPMs, there we go, way over there. 
I almost feel like it'd be worth it to fly it from the other seat. But, let's go ahead and do this. Alright, there we are. Got a little off center, made my turn a little wide. I got it. It's like I said, it's gonna be a we're gonna be in a tailwheel or a tailwind takeoff. Unfortunately, I read the wind report wrong. So let's power up. That manifold pressure is super hard to read. Almost thirty. Oh, girl, come on, come back, come back. Goodness gracious. All right, come on. There we go. That was horrible. Go figure. The worst takeoff I've had with this thing yet is with you guys watching. We got positive right. Gear coming up. Didn't like that tailwind takeoff, did it? So our RPMs, right about 2,000. Manifold pressure, let's bring that down a bit. Trim functions nice, just like any of the other aircraft. It flies very, very sluggishly, as you would expect. Let's do a quick circuit around the island here, and then we'll uh, bring her back in. Airspeed showing just under 100 knots. There she is, guys. I think the sounds on it are fantastic. I really dig the sounds. Flying around the cockpit looks absolutely good. Absolutely good. Nice, Mike. Easily creating custom views, customizable views. What does that do? Reader light? Ah, it's an ashtray. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Ton of things to play with in this aircraft. That is for darn sure. Flight model seems to be relatively simple. But again, at the same token, difficult. She's very sluggish. 
Now let's see if I can get some correct wind information here for me. Uh, 263 at zero. Oh, you know what? Hold off on that. That's going to be an inaccurate reading for the moment. Oh, I suppose I could just use this. I never use the in-game stuff anymore. That's where we are. Do, do, do. One six zero at sixteen at sixteen knots. Damn, that's a strong wind. All right. You know what's funny is I've got two different things. So I use the class echo that uses an integration with uh if you guys don't know what the class echo is just search that on my channel look search class echo i think you really like it. it's a really awesome piece of equipment but anyway um the wind there on it and it connects through simlink uh is reporting 143 at 14 knots but we're showing 160 on um that other thing <laughs> the live weather information Alright, so we actually need to land from the opposite direction. So let's do that. Now, as far as I can tell, this aircraft doesn't have any flaps. And again, if you want to check your fuel. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> So I'm going a bit wider because it takes a bit to slow it down. It, well, it actually doesn't take too long to slow it down. It takes a while to turn it. So make sure we have time to get lined up. Look at that. Airspeed tops out at 190 knots. Can you believe that? Isn't that crazy? Two big radial engines. 150 knots is about where you want to sit. <laughs> I think that's just insane. Alright, start pulling some power off here. Stall warning or engine warning. We're down at a hundred knots now. Back to full RPM, full mixture. There's that crosswind coming to get us. Very high approach. Bad lineup on my part. Bad lineup. Let's see if we can at least correct it where we don't look ridiculous here. Space shuttle approach. Oof. No. Center line, center line, center line. Come on, nowhere close. 
This girl just did not like me showing off to you guys, because these are the worst, this is the worst takeoff and landing I've done in it yet. I've done about, I think this is number four. Terrible. However, my friends, I will tell you right off the bat, I highly recommend this aircraft. It's right for the price. The fe it's feature rich for the price. A um, lot of customization options, a lot of cool features that aren't existent in any other aircraft. Many of the features had to be brought in from um, a, uh, a ground up configuration. So a lot of it had to be built directly from the start. Um, a lot of the baggage loading and all that was because this aircraft obviously wouldn't be able to integrate with uh, the modern day ground services. Um, and a lot of a lot of really neat design was clearly put into this. Um, is it the best flight model ever? No. Is it the most um, uh, up to date and, and flight accurate model? Probably not. Is it an incredibly amount of... Um, of uh, fun to fly yes is it great to start up yes do i love the sounds in it yes um and uh, again for the price again link down in the description below i think it was 20 us dollars definitely definitely worth every single penny of that price i think that is an, a incredibly fair price and i'm very grateful that the price is where it's at um so to wing 42 wonderfully done aircraft very very happy to show this on my channel i hope you guys have all enjoyed this and uh, as always stay safe and healthy and i'll see you in the next one